Hello, this is Ken Ferry with this week's Boots in the Field. Harvest is coming to a close in most places here in Illinois. I have visions of finishing plot harvest next week. This is good because I really don't want it to get in the way of deer hunting. We need to get it finished up. Lots of calls on fall burndowns uh, this week with good reason. Um, many of these fields are now coming on strong with some pretty winter annual growth, stuff that you can see from the road, um, not just volunteer crop coming out there. A lot of discussion on the mix is what to use. Should we add in some residual? What uh, What's the program out there? I, I guess I like to keep it simple. I'm kind of a believer in just keeping it simple at 2,4-D in Banville and clean up what's out there. Now, if it does turn warm in December like it did last year, uh, there will be a second flush, and you will have to deal with these uh, next spring, maybe moving a little bit earlier on your burn down. So a residual there would help, um, but we've done a lot of work with and without the residuals. I'm not sure in most cases uh, they're really going to be as, as big a help as you think. Either way, though, don't think of a fall application out there as going to eliminate your spring burn down because it just doesn't work that way. You're going to be disappointed. So the longer you're in no-till, the more winter annuals you're going to have to deal with uh, if you don't keep them in check. So the, I'm a proponent of the burn down in the fall, um, but I'm going to tell you from, from our history here, I'm just going to keep it simple uh, and move forward from there. Last week I asked you guys to to call out your neighbors and retailers who weren't following best management practices with this fall anhydrous. A number of you did just that, and it created quite a tizzy. Guys received all kinds of excuses, mainly though the excuse that the guys got is why were we putting this anhydrous on? It's getting late, we got to get it done. One or two responses, I'm applying later than I did last year, so it's at least got to be better, and this is true. Uh, but it did create quite a ruckus within the industry, and, and that's okay. A number of uh, uh, people are not happy with me for sigging you guys on them, and again, that's okay as well. A lot of the dealers, uh, us included, uh, signed on to the 4R Code of Ethics. Um, and we had posters that you could purchase that we put in the window to talk about what the 4R Code of Ethics was and to promote the 4R Code of Ethics. And I want to read you part of the 4R Code of Ethics that a number of retailers have signed on through throughout the state itself and what it says about anhydrous ammonia. Do not apply anhydrous ammonia in the fall until the maximum daily soil temperature falls below 50 degrees and is trending downward. The key here is maximum daily soil temperature falls below 50 degrees. So yeah, we did have a 46 or 47 degree soil temperature this morning, but it was back up 57, 58 by the afternoon. I'll have Thomas post the um, average, the maximum daily temperatures for the day, for the week on the, on the website so you guys can take a look at them along with the code of ethics that a number of us uh, signed on to. And I guess I'm, I'm a believer that if you're going to sign on to something like this, you have to support it and follow it. Otherwise, it's going to be worthless to the public itself. Now, a situation where we're setting the stage here for a repeat of last year. If December doesn't cool down and it turns off warm, we're going to be sitting there next spring with our fingers crossed, hoping that we don't lose this nitrogen as well. So just give that some thought. I realize we're in the right direction. Temperatures are going down. We just need to keep them moving from that. You guys that are applying this anhydrous, just make sure it's sealing. Uh, I couldn't believe it today. We're seeing some uh, toolbar smoking three, 400 feet behind the toolbar. Um, now, this is not a water quality issue, but it is a pocketbook issue, meaning that uh, we got to get these things sealed up. So in some places, maybe we just got too much moisture to get it sealed up itself. Took out a large uh, AccuSquirt plot today, uh, starter plot, and uh, really looked good actually all the way across. We'll be looking at that this uh, this winter. It was a plot that was replicated with twins and 30s all the way across. And uh, pretty much the whole day, the twins had the upper hand, 7 to 10 bushel 
uh, all the way across that plot. So uh, some good information we'll be able to work with there. We'll be working on some soybean starter plots tomorrow, uh, and we'll be interesting to see how they finish out as well. But uh, the soil test crews are keeping up. Uh, guys, remember to call them in. Some of you guys call in six or seven fields in one morning. We know you didn't do all that in the afternoon before. So let's remember, if you want to keep these chisel plows running, keep us posted on what's out there uh, in the field itself. November uh, 17th at 8.30 is the day we chose to do the hand shelling of all the ears that we've collected from our high and low population plots to be able to evaluate uh, hybrids' ability to flex. Uh, a number of you guys helped us last year, and we got it done in a short amount of time. We're looking at starting at 8.30. We do have uh, three shellers. One's even been automated. that hopefully be the one I'm running. Um, but we're looking for volunteers to come in and help count kernels, shell corn, and move things along. Um, if we get enough people in here, we'll make short work out of it in a hurry. So if you're interested in helping with the high-low population hand shelling plot, especially a lot of you guys were here last year and did a great job. Job. If, uh, if if anybody's interested in coming in to help us, just please call the office and let Katie know so we know what our workforce is for that day. And uh, I think we'll gather a lot of good information that we can stack on last year's information uh, to see what kind of repeatability we have within the genetics or the hybrids that were out there planting itself. With that, on behalf of everybody here at CropTech and Janine and I, we'd like to thank all you veterans out there. It's because of you that we have this great nation that we farm in. So thank you again. From there, let's keep her moving, keep her safe.